Hi everybody! Welcome to another Furry Friday! It's Lee and Nicole today. Hi. Yay! <laughs> it is a sunny day in Regina. I mean, we're it, looking very washed out on TikTok. Yeah. So, we have TikTok yeah. and Facebook. So, if we're yes. like doing this, just so you know. <laughs> That's why we're doing We that. look beautiful on Facebook, I must say. Yes. <laughs> and then TikTok, yeah, we're very, we're very washed out. Yeah. The light's kind of intense right now. It happens. <laughs> we can't complain. We had like on and off thunderstorms for the last few days. Um, it looks like one's rolling in. I don't know. I can't tell. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully we have a little bit of sunshine <laughs> or a little bit so, you know, we can go driving places and not uh, get stuck or stopped by a flooded underpass. But, oh yeah, we can hope. Times. We can have our fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll start with some housekeeping. Yeah. Uh, first up, we're open Sundays. This will be our second Sunday. Nicole's working. I'm here t Sunday, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's t Saturday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll be here on Sunday, though. We're going to be doing uh, Sundays all summer long, so yep. uh, we're going to be open from 12 till 4. So a little bit shorter hours compared to our normal week, um, but either way, we'll be here. Yeah. Or one of us will be. So <laughs> this, week, this week it's me, so come by on Sunday and say hi. Yeah. Or yeah, we're very do excited. Your normal shopping. Yeah, exactly. So we know some summers can be really busy. People are going uh, off, going on vacations, going to the beach, the cabin, whatever. So hopefully being open Sundays will be helpful for your hectic summer plans and we can uh, we can facilitate some good shopping time without having to worry about when we're open. And if you don't know where we are, because oh, yeah, yes. sometimes people tune in and they're like, I didn't know you were there. <laughs> but um, we are in Regina, Saskatchewan. Yes. So. If you live in Regina and you didn't know that we are also in Regina, now we you are. do. <laughs> we are in the far east. We are just off Chuka Boulevard um, in the east end. So, yeah, if you didn't know we were here, we're just we're just way out. We're just we're just lost in the east end. So, <laughs> so come and see us if you are in Regina any day of the week now, Monday to Saturday, 11 to 6, and Sundays, 12 to 4. So, yeah, that's super exciting. Uh, Hop U is coming up. We're having our third Hop U Great. all Yep, number three. three. All about. I can't do it this way. Uh, it is kind of hard. This right. is much better. <laughs> but it's like half. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is three. If you do American Sign Language, you're supposed oh. to do it with these three fingers. Thing. Um, because this is W. Hop U number three coming up. And we're very excited because it's another five dayer. So Monday to Friday, Monday the 19th to Friday the 23rd. Very exciting. It's all about uh, Beyond the Bag, a kibble master class. So we're going to talk everything uh, kibble, talk about what's the difference between different dry options, how do we choose a bag, how do we read a label on a bag, how do we transition between some something to something new, what are the ingredients in the bag. Yes. That's the big one we want to know. <laughs> yes, exactly. How do we pick something quality, something grade A we talk about all the time here. We talk about uh, our... A uh, little link on our website, what grade is my kibble? We talk about that a lot. So we will go through all of that. We'll walk you through the steps if you've ever printed off the PDF or tried to do it yourself and maybe it was a little bit confusing. We'll be doing that with you. We'll pick some brands, we'll do it together. And yeah, we're super excited. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm it's, very excited. It's gonna be good. And it's running from Monday, June 19th to Friday, June 23rd. So we'll yes. remind you again yes. the next couple Fridays before we get there yeah um, but uh, those are we're gonna be going all week long Monday to Friday um, so you can tune in and whatever you miss will get put up on our YouTube yeah. channel as well so yeah we already have the uh, coming soon if you wanted to watch any of our hop universities we've got a section on our website where you can look up all of our hop you stuff um, we have a coming soon uh, bubble there for the hoppy that's coming up with our worksheet. So, you know, we always have a worksheet going up there. So, if you wanted to get ahead, I made start, a quiz. For I this did. Time. I made a quiz. I'm so excited. It's a short quiz, no <laughs> pressure, super easy, just focused on review. But I thought it would be fun to do like a true semester and kick it off, end it with a bang and a fun little quiz. So, uh, there's also that. That won't be available until Friday the 23rd, the very last day. Because, oh, well, we have to keep it realistic. So, you don't get the exam until the day <laughs> of the exam. <laughs> but yeah, so we're super excited about that. So don't forget to tune in. Like Nicole said, we'll keep we'll keep updating you guys. And we'll, we'll remind you. Yeah, we'll keep reminders coming. 
Uh, what's next? PPC. Ooh, we have an event coming at the very end of June, uh, the day before Canada Day, um, on the 30th? Yep. The 30th, that's the last day of the month. It's um, a Saturday, I think. It's a Friday. Oh, okay. Right? Yes. I don't know. I believe June It's 30th. the 30th. It's well, the 30th. We'll keep you updated. I don't know if we're allowed to share all of the details just yet, so we'll just... We'll, we'll like plop it in there that there's something coming and get But it's for our PPC customers, so those yeah. are, um, it's going to be just local. Sorry guys, online. But, yeah. um, or away in different parts of the country. Yeah. 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 It's just going to be local. Um, yeah. But um, if you're part of the PPC, then you already know what it is because we've done a few events already. Um, if you're not part of it, um, that's the last day you want to be to become part of it. So on June 30th, we run our uh, report to see who's shopped with us seven times in that six month period from January to the end of June. So if you want to be part of the PPC, you just have to shop with us seven times in, the, in a six month period. And then you get automatically added to our Platinum Pause program. So you can always come in and ask us, where am I at in that level? And we'll definitely share that with you guys. How are you doing today? Um, Good job. So you can always, uh, if you're in store, if you want to give us a call, we'll let you know how far along you are, if you've got your seven, if you're close to your seven, uh, and then you will be automatically added into the PPC for July to December. And then again, we will evaluate our VIP members to see who else qualifies for PPC. So super excited. If you needed any more information about that, you can always give us a call, uh, send us a message on Instagram, or stop by in store, and we'll inform you all about the Platinum Paws Club. It's a uh, a step up from our VIP program so a great way for us to uh, celebrate and reward the customers who shop with us all the time because um, you know we like to do events and we like to celebrate and you know we like to have a good time and have some pause. Uh, what's up next on my list of housekeeping is this sizzling six pack so that started on June 1st we started our sizzling six pack promotion, which is a three month long event. So it goes from June 1st to August 31st. Um, anytime you make a purchase, you fill in a square on your six pack. Once you come in six times and fill in all six squares, your pre-tax total for those six days is added to your account as a credit. So you get whatever you spent pre-tax um, on that six pack, you get back to spend in the store. So it's super exciting. Um, we have all of the cards in store and we'll keep them here so that whoever comes in for the pupper, whoever touches your account, whether it's you or a friend or your spouse, we'll have those there for you. Um, and we'll keep filling those out. Um, you can get better than 10% credit back to your account by doing bonuses. So we've got five bonuses, so you can get up to 15% back by trying a novel chew, like rabbit or kangaroo, trying mini bubbles, trying a supplement, bringing a friend we've never met, and trying artisan. So we've got five bonuses. We do have an Instagram post out talking about all the logistics of Sizzling Six Pack, so if you ever wanted to uh, look back and get all of the details, you can always check out that Instagram post uh, where we outline the event and everything that comes along with it. So yeah, you've got three months uh, to come in and fill in your six pack, uh, and then once you complete a six pack, you can keep going. So you can make as many six packs as you can in that three months and you continue to get credit back onto your account. So that's super exciting. Uh, another fun summer event that we're doing. Uh, but yeah, just to reward people who come in and shop, we want to be able to celebrate our customers um, and give a little bit back to them for uh, for shopping with us because we really appreciate uh, people picking House of Paws and coming in and chatting and bringing their pups and things. So yeah. So very excited for the sizzling six pack. Uh, we also have it in July now, we've got the summer sidewalk fair. So we're so excited. Uh, last year we did the summer, the summer sidewalk fair. Um, I started uh, after that fair. So this will be my first fair at House of Paws. I'm super excited. It is also Rivera, which is our, uh, where we are located. We're on the bottom floor of the Rivera uh, Retirement Living Community. And they are celebrating their fifth anniversary. So it's gonna be a huge event. There's gonna be up to 50 vendors uh, from Regina are gonna be here in the parking lot, set up with all their tents. There'll be food, there'll be entertainment. Uh, we'll obviously have a huge booth and lots of fun things going on as well. So we're super excited. Uh, 
uh, if you are a local business in Regina and this is your first year hearing of it, you can register on our website. We have a summer sidewalk fair uh, product that you can go into and look into uh, how to register to be part of the summer sidewalk fair. If you are someone who is in Regina or who will be in Regina on July 15th, uh, you can stop by, come walk the Summer Sidewalk Fair, see all the amazing local businesses, get a bite to eat, um, enjoy some local entertainment, all of those lovely things. So we are super excited uh, for that to happen again. It was apparently the hottest day of the year last year was our last Summer Sidewalk is what I'm hearing. So make sure you bring hats, sunscreen, plenty of water. Um, I think there might be some frozen treats being handed out to help uh, help cut the cool or cut the heat a little bit. Um, Hi guys. Um, so yeah, uh, that is our July event. Again, we'll continue to update everybody on our July events. Uh, just wanted to sprinkle that in there for anybody uh, watching to uh, mark your calendars for July 15th because that's going to be super exciting. Uh, the other thing on the housekeeping is new products. Oh my goodness. Yesterday we got in our Big Country Raw order, which was amazing. We got three new, pro three new products from... Big Country Raw, we got in uh, their brand new goat milks. They come in an antioxidant blend, which is a spirulina and blueberry blend. So that one is a bright blue, super cool, um, very awesome. We also got in their uh, immunity blend, which is carrot, ginger, and curcumin, uh, which is a uh, kind of like a turmeric. Um, so that one is awesome for immunity. Um, it is a bright orange, um, so it's super cool. And then we also got in their uh, frozen goat in the cookies and cream, which is super cute. It's a, uh, uh, they're, they're frozen goat yogurt ice cream cups, basically. Um, and the cookies and cream one has their, uh, their uh, they call it their slobbers uh, cookie crumble mix. So it's like an apple-y cookie crumble that's sprinkled into the goat milk uh, for your pupper. So they come in a box of three little cups um, I uh, got a couple of cups uh, for my kitty on her birthday um, and they really, really love them. So uh, definitely come in and check out our new products. Uh, the goat milks are also fermented uh, in their regular, their immunity and now their antioxidant. Um, so that's really awesome. Uh, the immunity one is good for what we're gonna be talking about in a little bit. We're gonna kind of touch on some seasonal allergy stuff and all about immunity. So that orange one would be great for immunity. And the blue one again is antioxidant with blue spirulina, which is super fun and bright. Um, I had made some little frozen paws in the color of the rainbow to give out to little puppers as treats. And if only, that one had been available and ready to purchase when I made those because it took me, I struggled getting blue and finding blue spirulina in Regina. It was impossible. I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so if you are also like to make fun, super awesome colored frozen treats for your pup, that blue spirulina one makes an amazing blue. It is super awesome. Um, so yeah, if though any of those products interest you, definitely uh, come in and take a look at them. Uh, we have had a bit of a goat milk shortage in many of our brands, so we're super happy to have some more um, options in for goat milk uh, for those puppers who really like to rotate through their types and uh, their flavors. So those are our new products. Super excited to have them in, um, and we've got some. We got an awesome kind of sale coming up for Big Country Raw in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for more info on that. That if you are a big country raw feeder or you wanted to try it we've got a sale coming up again not sure how much I can spill the beans on that one but stay tuned we will keep you informed on that and that's all the housekeeping I think that I have uh, for us today um, so I guess we can probably dive right into it let me double check our comments just to make sure I didn't miss anybody uh, where are you guys located? Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh, we're in the east end of Regina, off Chuka. if you are here. Um, so yeah, I think I've got all those questions up and answered. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the live, definitely pop them in the comments. Uh, we try and, uh, oops, TikTok is always yelling at me. There we go. Uh, so keep those questions coming. We will try and get to them as soon as we can. If not, we will definitely be looking at all the comments at the end of the live. Uh, so make sure we didn't miss anybody. Uh, we got a question, raw food for obesity. We're talking about pet obesity today. So we're talking, starting with seasonal allergies and then we're talking about pet obesity second. So 
keep that question. We will get to that one um, in a little bit here. First, I wanted to, TikTok is yelling at me all over again. Okay, so we're gonna jump into seasonal allergies uh, because we are full into summer. We are full into um, flowering of crops and dust and all of the lovely things that come with warm weather. Um, so we are gonna talk a little bit about seasonal allergies. So seasonal allergies are what they are. They're allergies that come throughout the season. Uh, things, TikTok, please don't remind me again. Okay, there we go. I think, I think we're good now. Um, so uh, seasonal allergies are what they sound like. They are allergies that happen seasonally, typically in the spring and the fall when we have a change in temperature. We've got dust, we've got pollen. Um, in the spring, we've got snow mold as the snow is melting. So all of those things can contribute to seasonal allergies, whereas dietary allergies tend to be ongoing. So we would notice aller allergy symptoms um, ongoing if it was something dietary we would notice it seasonally typically in the spring summer and fall if it's seasonal so some things that we recommend for seasonal allergies maybe your pup is experiencing seasonal allergies right now maybe they've got a bit of itchy skin um hot spots redness um like picking at their paws um all those kinds of things could be an indicator that we're experiencing some seasonal allergies um so a couple of products i've got here uh, we recommend for seasonal allergies. The first one is Canadian bee pollen. So we've got a couple, two brands of Canadian bee pollen. I've gotten showing off the Live Strong one right here. Um, so it will be backwards for you guys, so sorry about that. Uh, but the Live Strong Canadian bee pollen, uh, Canadian bee pollen is an incredible source of quercetin, um, which is a, a natural antihistamine. Um, it comes in like a little like powder, like a little powder form um, that you can sprinkle onto your pet's food, um, add, in, uh, add it to a little bit of moisture to make sure that they are ingesting it and not inhaling it. Um, so yeah, Canadian bee pollen, really awesome, really great source of natural antihistamine called quercetin. Um, the bee pollen can take a little bit of time to build up in the system um, and notice a difference. So we would wanna, typically we'd wanna start this before we notice seasonal allergies because then we've got the body kind of amped up and ready to go. But we can definitely add this in uh, to the supplement regime uh, whenever. Uh, right now, if we started it, we'd probably start to notice difference in a few weeks. Definitely would be prepping us for the fall season. So Canadian bee pollen is a great um, thing to help with those seasonal allergies. Second, same brand, the Livestrong brand, I've got Milk Thistle. So Milk Thistle is an amazing product. We recommend it for all sorts of things. Um, it is a liver detoxifier. So the liver is what processes, this is, this is my liver. The li <laughs> my liver, your liver processes um, all the toxins and impurities in the world as they come in. So some of the, those things also involve uh, histamines and all of the allergy bits that are coming into the environment. Your liver is processing them and cleaning them out of your body um, during seasonal allergy. During the allergy season uh, that we're in right now, uh, the liver can often get overloaded with, um, with stuff to process, um, which causes that allergy reaction, that overreaction of the immune system. So supporting the liver with milk thistle can help that liver cycle everything through and then we don't notice such a, a, a massive allergy response. Um, so baby bee pollen, an awesome addition to the supplement regime. Again, a powder format, so added to a bit of liquid. Uh, so we are ingesting it and not inhaling it. So this is another great one. And then two other ones, uh, which aren't specific to allergies, but can definitely help with allergies are things that boost the immune system. So any immune system booster is awesome for allergy season, just to help the body um, deal, prepare, and combat uh, that immune system response. So anything we can do to boost the immune system is awesome. Immune system is awesome. I've got two products here. I've got Dandelion, uh, which is an immune system booster. This one is in like little dried dandelion leaves. Um, great immune system booster, awesome to add into rotation. Um, if we're doing other things for immunity and we've run out of that one, we could definitely add in some dandelion into that mix. Super great product. And then you hear me talk about mushrooms all the time. We're on a mushroom craze at House of Paws. We love talking about mushrooms and the amazing things that mushrooms do for the immune system. I'm holding the Fur Babies Power Blend right now. So Fur Babies is our newest 
mushroom supplement that we got into the store. Uh, the Power Blend has five mushrooms in it. Um, so it's kind of an overall booster. We do have a mushroom live on our YouTube channel if you wanted in-depth details on what is it about mushrooms that are really good for the immune system and how do I feed mushrooms and what do I do and all the things. Definitely check out that um, that live which is uploaded onto YouTube um, to get more information on mushrooms. Uh, but a blend is going to definitely give you that big pack to big punch to the immune system to help boost it. Um, so yeah, mushrooms, amazing. Dandelions, amazing. Milk thistle, amazing for that immunity boosting. And then bee pollen is awesome because it's that natural antihistamine. So if we're noticing seasonal allergy symptoms, uh, this would be the way to go to help boost the body's ability to deal with those things. Uh, we can't we can't stop pollen from happening we can't stop the dust so we just have to prepare our pets bodies and our bodies for that incoming uh allergy threats like those things and, and keep our bodies uh ready and prepared to fight it off so those are some amazing products that we have in store um if you have any other questions about it definitely check our youtube channel we've got uh, a few weeks ago, we did a live on all about allergies, on the difference between seasonal allergies and dietary allergies. So you can definitely check that out if you wanted more in depth on allergies. We've got a live on mushrooms. So if you wanted to learn more about the different types of mushrooms, the Power Blend, make sure I get this right here. The Power Blend has uh, chaga, cordyceps, lion mane, reishi, and turkey tail. So those are the five mushrooms that are in here. Each of them has their own um, kind of specialty. Cordyceps are great for respiratory health. Lion's mane and turkey tail are awesome for cancer fighting. Um, so each of the mushrooms has their own little specialty. All together, they're an amazing immune system booster. So definitely check out that mushroom live. I talk all about mushrooms. Crazy about mushrooms. I love mushrooms. So if you want to check that out, definitely check that out on our YouTube channel. So it was all about seasonal allergies. Make sure you didn't have any other questions here about seasonal allergies. Uh, what do you recommend for flea and tick? So kind of in the same vein, we're getting into that um, that nice weather here in Saskatchewan. So flea and ticks are a issue now as well. Uh, we generally recommend natural uh, preventatives to flea and tick. Also did a live on flea, tick, and heartworm where we talked all about how to prevent it, uh, talked about testing for heartworm and all of those good things uh, we talked about um, in brief. We generally recommend a ultrasonic collar like tickless, which uh, emits ultrasonic waves that uh, prevent the ticks from being able to maneuver accurately in their environment. We recommend a amber collar. Amber is a fossilized tree sap, uh, which emits a aroma that is a deterrent to ticks and fleas on the pet's fur and body. And it also creates like a static charge in the fur so that uh, incoming ticks aren't able to hook onto the bodies of our pets because of that static charge. And we recommend a, uh, uh, we have a natural uh, bug spray or bug oil. It's a natural essential oil blend uh, that's safe for us and safe for our pets that we can add into the regime. If we're doing a natural flea and tick preventative, we generally recommend doubling up. So if we're doing the ultrasonic collar, we probably also want to do the bug spray. If we're doing the amber collar, we would probably also want to do the bug spray. So just adding in a multiple uh, defenses for our pets is key. Um, obviously, if we are going for a deep bush walk out in the wilderness, we probably want to be doing a full tick check uh, with a tick comb and one of those little tick tornado puller offers. Um, but if we're just going for a walk down the sidewalk for a couple of minutes, uh, we probably don't have to be as worrisome. So we want to make sure that we're taking into consideration um, the area we live in how uh, densely populated and how much of a threat are these pests to our pet. Where are we taking our pets? Are we going into the deep brush? Are we going for a walk on the sidewalk? Are we going to a local park? Um, that will vary how severely we want to be uh, monitoring our pets. Obviously, it is important to be regularly checking our pets after we've gone out for a walk every night, making sure we're checking their fur and their ears between their little toe beans uh, for ticks, um, just to make sure that we're uh, making sure there's nothing on them at the end of the night. Um, I used to live out in rural Saskatchewan on a farm, so tick checks were a uh, daily, if not multiple times a day occurrence uh, when you're living out on the prairies with tons of ticks. So 
make sure that we're uh, checking uh, what our threat level is um, and then uh, using uh, the preventatives in accordance with that. Uh, but definitely check out our Flea and Tick uh, live where we talk all about those kinds of things, um, especially in relation to Saskatchewan, which is different from other provinces in relation to how many ticks and fleas and all those things are, are there. So hopefully that helped answer your question there. But yeah, if we don't have any other questions about seasonal allergies, and I don't think I have anything that I wanted to talk about seasonal allergies, we will jump right into our talk about pet obesity. Um, so pet obesity is a real issue in our pets. Um, there are uh, ways that we can tell if our pet is or isn't obese just by doing a body composition check. So checking um, their body composition by looking at them, we wanna see a taper in the waist so we don't want it to be straight all the way through from shoulder to tail we want to see a bit of a taper in the waist uh, we also want to see if we're looking at that if we're looking from the top down we also want to see a taper if we're looking at them from the side their chest their rib cage we want to see it taper up this way as it comes along the belly and the midsection we want to see a taper both looking above and looking under we want to see that taper we want to be able to feel the ribs but not see the ribs so a great checker for uh, body composition when it comes to ribs is a hand check basically so if we touch here this and we can't feel the bone of our thumb this would be an indicator that our pet might be obese because we can't feel the ribs if we're like this and we do a nice fist and we run our finger across here and this is what the real ribs feel like that's probably uh, underweight if we can feel the ribs this protruding this much. If we flip our hand on the side and we feel across here, that would be an ideal weight where we can feel the ribs, uh, but they're not protruding like this. So they're not hidden like this. They're not protruding like this, but they are, we can feel them uh, generally as we touch on their rib cage. So that's one way to test uh, body composition. So looking at the taper from top down, we see it taper at the waist. Looking from the side, we see it come up along the rib cage and taper that way. And then when we touch, we can feel but not see their ribs. They are kind of like when we run our finger along here. So we always recommend making sure we're doing our regular vet checkups. Um, so we are keeping track of their weight. Uh, we have a scale in store, but your vet also has a scale. So they'll keep track, keep it all on file so we know kind of what uh, what body weight we're at. Your vet will also help you um, create a good goal for what the ideal weight is for your breed of pup. Obviously a Yorkie shouldn't weigh a hundred pounds and a golden retriever shouldn't weigh five. So every pet is different. We want to keep those into consideration. Make sure that we're having the ideal weight uh, for each pet type, which is why it's important to visit our vet regularly and make sure that we are uh, keeping tabs on what the, what the goal is for our specific pet. But uh, in general, some factors that um, contribute to um, your pet's obesity are diet, exercise, and treats. So diet is super important. We had someone asking uh, raw food for obesity. So we generally recommend a low processed fresh diet when we're talking about um, losing weight or coming to a, uh, a, a good ideal weight. Um, the higher processed the food, the more carb laden the foods are, and we all know that carbs turn into sugar, sugar feeds disease, our pets don't have a biological requirement for carbs, so all of that is just going in and coming out. It's, it doesn't have any nutritional value for our pups other than being a bulker and a filler in the food. So the fresher we can get, the closer to a biologically appropriate diet we can get, not only are we feeding less, uh, but we're also seeing less poops because we are putting in a, nutri a nutritionally dense food source. So we can feed less because we're getting everything we need from a smaller portion. Uh, fresh feeding is awesome because there's no none of that added carbs, no added fillers. Um, so we can make sure that we're giving our pets everything they need with all without all the extra carb, with all that extra sugar. Um, so we're getting everything we need from a smaller portion. Um, this kind of comes into treats as well. Um, so making sure we're not 
overfeeding on treats, especially with small dogs. Um, a, a single treat could be nine calories. That could be if we fed 10 of those a day, we've almost probably hit close to their calorie limit uh, just in feeding treats. So we wanna make sure that we're feeding uh, treat, ca treats appropriate to our dog and we're not giving the full daily food intake in treats alone. Treats are supplemental feeding. They're treats, they're called treats for a reason. They're not a complete and balanced meal for our pets. So we do wanna be feeding those sparingly. Um, again, uh, Yorkie probably wants to go with a very low calorie, small treat, something like a single ingredient freeze dried beef liver, which you can get in really tiny portions. Uh, we did a, um, I believe we have a talk all on training treats and all of those things. Uh, one of those that we recommend is crumps, uh, beef liver, single ingredient, super tiny chunks, less than a calorie per bite. Um, so really great if we need to be reinforcing uh, a behavior, like every time you go out to the bathroom, you come in, you get a treat, or maybe we're doing uh, formal training and we need to have something that we're giving all of the time as a reward. Um, so we'll wanna be checking that. Of course, uh, a golden retriever can probably do a lot more treats as they have a larger calorie bank uh, to be eating through. Um, but we can also do things like fresh fruits and veggies um, as training treats or as treats on top of the meal or uh, in between meal times, fruits and veggies tend to be lower in calories, which are awesome. Uh, things like cucumber are amazing mostly water so they're a very low calorie really great way to um reinforce behavior positively or give a treat or add as a topper to their food things like peppers are also an awesome low calorie option uh fruit and berries are awesome fruit and berries are full of antioxidants which are great for uh the immune system so berries during this time are are really great they're about to come into season so hopefully they'll get a little bit cheaper uh packs of strawberries and blueberries and raspberries um are awesome uh little treats for your pet as well um so those are great options for treats uh but yeah in general we want to make sure that we're being cognizant of the treat intake of our pets so that we're not overfeeding them um without notice, we're trying to keep up with the food recommendations and we're feeding the right amount of calories for the ideal weight that we want. And then we forget that we've given a handful of treats throughout the day, which is contributing to that calorie intake. So we gotta be mindful of that. The third factor that I talked about was exercise. So just like us, exercise is super important for our overall health. Making sure that we are getting regular exercise into our pets is important. Um, going out for walks, being let out in the backyard to do some running around, um, just keeping them active um, in any way that we can. For kitties, making sure that we're uh, playing with them inside. An amazing toy for kitties to make sure that they're up and active is a uh, like a treat or a toy wand. It looks like a little uh, like a little fishing rod with a string and a toy at the end. Um, I use these all the time for my kitties, being able to take them around the whole house and up over furniture and down and under coffee tables and all the way around the house. Um, those are really awesome. Uh, those kitties don't get out on walks. Um, my one cat likes walks. My other cat does not like walks. Um, so being able to facilitate play in the home for cats is really important. Um, so yeah, we want to make sure we keep them active, keep them engaged, um, taking our pets out, um, especially in the summer can be difficult as it's nice as it gets quite hot in the summer here in Regina, Saskatchewan. So keeping in mind, making sure we're staying hydrated and all those things when we're going out on long walks is important, but exercise, super important for our pets when we're talking about pet obesity, making sure they're getting um, the exercise that they need throughout the day. So getting to that ideal, uh, if we're talking about our diet, we talked about fresh feeding, we talked about incorporating more fresh food, something biologically appropriate that isn't full of unnecessary fillers like carbs, which turn to sugar. We want to be free feeding uh, also in a feeding window and not free feeding. So free feeding is when we just fill the bowl up and when it's empty, we fill it up again. And then when it's empty, we fill it up again. We aren't, we won't know how much our pet is eating in a day if we're free feeding. Feeding within a feeding window and having scheduled meal times is super important for making sure that we are 
measuring how much we're feeding um, so we can keep track of um, their weight in relation to how much they are consuming calorie wise. So we don't, we also don't want to necessarily be following the back of our kibble bag uh, to the T. Um, those are all recommendations for an average dog of that weight. So that will greatly depend on the activity level of your pet. So if a 50 pound dog is supposed to eat two cups of food, maybe your pet is super, super, super active and you notice that they're a little bit underweight, we could probably up that. We don't have to stick to that two cups um, of food to like without any adjustment. We can adjust that a little bit. If we are told a 50 pound dog should eat about two cups of food, and they're very inactive, maybe they're a little bit older, they don't get out as often, we could probably bump the below two cups. So we wanna keep in mind uh, that in a feeding window, we're able to track that. In a scheduled feeding meal, we're able to track that. We're able to know, okay, I've been feeding two cups for the last couple weeks and I haven't noticed any weight loss, then we can cut it back a little bit. Maybe we do one and three quarter cups of food and we keep that up for a couple of weeks and we notice, oh look, we're, we're finally getting closer to what we were looking for. Um, we can also be feeding, we also wanna be feeding to the ideal weight. So if our pet is 50 pounds, but we want them to be 40 pounds, we would feed to the ideal. So we would feed our pet to the ideal weight and not what they weigh right now. Same goes if they are underweight, we'll wanna feed up to their ideal weight if they're 40 and we want them to be 50, we feed to that 50 mark so they're getting the calories and the food quantity for a dog of the ideal size. So that's the importance of feeding times. Uh, we talked about not overfeeding on treats. So now that we're doing a feeding schedule and we're measuring out those meals, now we know that if we are going to be feeding a lot of treats during the day, we can cut down on those meals a little bit. Um, if we're adding toppers, which we always recommend adding fresh toppers, any amount of raw is better than no raw. Uh, we can be adjusting that calorie intake for what we're adding into the meal, into the diet. If we're doing heavy training that day and we know we're gonna be giving lots and lots of treats, uh, we might wanna cut back on their meals that day. So that's super important. Um, and one second here, did miss anything? Okay, awesome. So once we kind of have a schedule figured out, we've got our feeding window figured out, um, then we can start doing that ideal feeding with constant checking. That's why I said it's important to go to our vet, get them weighed in, talk about the goal, and then we can continue to go in for more checkups as we do these adjustments. Um, so we went, we go home, we go, we check our pet, we do the test, we can't feel the ribs at all, we go, well, maybe my pet's a little bit overweight, we do a weigh-in, we see what is our goal weight, and we adjust the food. We take it down a little bit, we do scheduled meal times, we consider adding in a less processed treat or a lower calorie treat or even just some fruits and veggies, and we start a regular exercise regime. So those are really important things in helping our pets uh, get back to their ideal weight. Um, super important for the health and longevity of our pets. We're all about extending the lives of our pets through nutrition and proper nutrition um, involves proper feeding as well. We don't wanna be overfeeding our pets. We don't wanna be underfeeding our pets. Um, an ideal body weight and an ideal uh, food intake is super important in extending their lives, um, keeping them happy and healthy. Um, also giving them enough uh, nutrients to do really exciting things in their life and be super active. Um, if we have a really energetic pup who loves to go outside on super long walks, we want to make sure we're facilitating that with um, high quality, biologically appropriate food at the right amount. So we are keeping them energized, keeping them full, um, making sure we keep them at that ideal weight. Um, so those are all things that are super, super important. So I hope that helped. Uh, just a recap on the body composition. If we look down from the top, we want to see a taper at the waist. If we look at them from the side, we want to see a taper after the ribs and up against the abdomen. We want to feel their ribs but not see their ribs. Feeling right here, that's overweight. Feeling here, that's underweight. Feeling along here, that is an ideal weight. So 
what do we need to think about when we think about getting to that ideal weight? We want to think about their food, making sure we're feeding a biologically appropriate diet, preferably something fresh, something raw, close to biologically appropriate as we can, where we're not filling up their bowl with fillers and extras like carbs, which turn to sugar. We want to be considering exercise, keeping them active, um, uh, keeping them active both in and out of the house. If we're a dog, we'll probably be able to go on lots of walks. If we're a cat, we want to keep them active in the home with something like a wand or um, us just playing with them. My one cat loves to play tag. Uh, I get very tired after we've gone up and down the stairs a couple of times and my cat keeps wanting to play tag with me. So find the fun things to do in the home, especially if it's plus 40 out and there is a heat warning. Finding fun, interactive exercises in the home can be really, really beneficial um, as we come into the summer season. Hi. Um, so doing that is super important. And then treats. Uh, remembering that treats are calories and they add to our pet's diet. Um, if we have to feed lots of treats, keeping them low calorie, single ingredient, maybe thinking about fruits and veggies um, as training treats is super important. So uh, adjusting the food intake based on uh, different things. Uh, Nicole, who's uh, back there helping customers today, uh, her little dog Boyer is currently in classes doing some training. Um, so days that he, we know that he's gonna be going out and doing some heavy training and getting lots of reinforcement and lots of treats, we wanna take into consideration the daily meal uh, for that so that we're not overfeeding um, that day. So it's a daily thing. One of the reasons why I mentioned not to follow the back of the bag um, without question, some days are gonna be different, seasons are gonna be different. In the summer, maybe your dog is super active, so we'll wanna make sure that we're keeping up, uh, looking at that body composition, uh, keeping up with their uh, changes to their diet during the summertime, maybe we need to feed a bit more. In the winter, maybe they're less likely to go outside on super long walks while it's minus 40, so we might feed a little bit less during that time. So yeah, I think that covers what I wanted to talk about, uh, about pet obesity. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to have a conversation because we are all about extending the lives of pets through nutrition. So being able to um, have a conversation like that can be super important, making sure that we're going to our vet and having those kinds of conversations and keeping up with our checkups is also super important. So if anybody has any questions about anything that I said today, Pop your questions in the chat. I'm gonna do a quick look through. Love that hand analogy. Yeah, it's super helpful, um, especially when we're looking at our pets and we're thinking, I don't, I don't know what to look for. Do I need to, do I need to go to the vet today and 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 double check things? This is a great way to to gauge it yourself um, to be able to tell kind of what we're looking at. It can be hard with different types of dogs, um, especially really really fluffy dogs. <laughs> we probably will never be able to tell just by looking at the ribs if we can see them or not if they're 90 percent fluff and 10 percent dog so being able to feel along those ribs and kind of have a guide uh can be really important uh, my dog is licking his paws any tips so we talked a little bit about seasonal allergies and that can be one of the signs that your pet is experiencing some seasonal allergies um licking the paws biting at the paws, having a lot of redness or irritation around the paws can definitely be an indicator uh, that there may be some seasonal allergies at play. Um, uh, goat, if it smells like nacho cheesy, really bad, some a, a bit of yeast is normal, but that super extensive nacho cheesy smell um, could be an indication that we have an overgrowth of yeast. Um, if that's been happening, consistently throughout time. If you've just started to notice it now as the seasons have changed, that could be an indication that it's just some seasonal allergy things. Um, one thing that you can definitely do is anytime you go out for a walk and you come back in, maybe give those paws a quick wipe down or a quick wash, um, just cause they're going around, they're low to the ground. We've got four of them touching the ground. So any dirt or pollen is just gonna stick to the sweat on their paws and in the hair on their paws. They bring them inside and they can't get it off. So when they start licking it and biting at it, then that irritates it. And it's kind of like a cycle of irritation. So to try and stop the cycle at its source, 
we can kind of wash the paws off. We can think about maybe wearing some booties, um, especially if the sidewalk is really, really hot. We don't want to burn the paw pads. So putting on some boots um, to keep the feet off of the ground could be really helpful or incorporating some immunity boosters, milk thistle, dandelion root, mushrooms, or Canadian bee pollen can be really helpful in that sense too. So I hope that answered your question there. Are greenlit mussels for preventative care or can they support a pup who already has joint issues? So greenlit mussel is great for preventative care. When we're talking about joint issues um, and, prevent, and preventing them, any bit of uh, added help that we can give is gonna be beneficial. Adding a greenlit mussel when we're a puppy, totally fine. Adding a greenlit mussel when we're an adult, recommended as we're getting closer to that senior age, um, making sure that we're in court, especially for breeds of dogs um, who are susceptible to joint issues, like Boyer, who's a dash hound, has a very long spine, needs to keep up with stuff like that, will probably be on a joint supplement uh, and supplementation for his whole life just to prevent that. Uh, <laughs> hi! <laughs> um, in terms of existing joint issues and working through those greenlit muscle is an option awesome helper for that um it can help to rebuild uh some like facilitate the building of that cartilage and the bone density um so i would say if we already have joint issues greenlit muscle muscle is an awesome add-in if we're having arthritis or pain associated with the joint issue we might want to consider um something a little bit more extra strength maybe something that's more targeted at pain um as opposed to a greenlit muscle which is mostly just targeted at overall joint uh health and bone health um if we have existing joint issues um it kind of depends on the severity if we're noticing pain or limping and stuff like that, we might want to consider something a little bit extra strength, something like adored beasts jump for joints, um, or like a hemp oil, uh, which can help with arthritis and joint pain too. Um, so kind of depends what we're looking for. Um, if you had, uh, I have a sheet Carly made. Um, so Zayner has been having some uh, joint issues, um, some cartilage issues in his spine. Um, and so she, Carly's done a lot of um, research on uh, how to support the bones and joints and the cartilage, especially in uh, in the spine, especially when it comes to degeneration. Um, and making sure we have a plethora of bone and joint support is super important. So if we're having active joint issues, I would say grabbing things from multiple categories, doing something anti-inflammatory uh, like turmeric, doing something with um, uh, glucosamine and chronotrin, chronotrin? Um, that is like, a, like the a substance that's in cartilage, uh, which would be something like a greenlit muscle or a shark cartilage um, is super important. Um, and then doing something fresh uh, into the diet that has some added uh, bone and joint help. Right now I'm drawing a blank on the fresh fruits and veggies that were on the list. Uh, but you can definitely, we have a section in our website now. At the very bottom of the website you can do, it's called um, uh, IBDD prevention or support. It's down where you get the link to our blog and what's in my bowl. It's IBDD support or IBDD prevention, something like that. And it takes you to a document that Carly had made uh, with all of those different categories about anti-inflammatory, about um, fresh food supports, about bone and joint, about all of those good things um, and kind of the regime that she's doing for Zayna right now to help support him. Uh, so if you needed something a little bit more extensive, I would definitely go that route. Uh, if we're dealing with pain, I would go with kind of a anti-inflammatory pain relief route, but it's kind of per issue, per pet, kind of very specialized help. Um, so I don't know if I answered your question whatsoever in any kind of helpful way, but in short, yes, green lip muscle can be used for prevention and for supporting an existing joint issue. That's the short answer. I kind of rambled a bit, but I wanna make sure that if any puppers out there or if your pup is dealing with something really severe or something really painful, that we're, we're, uh, we're doing the right things and doing enough for them. 
So yeah, hopefully I answered your questions. If you have a follow-up question from that, definitely ask it so I can be down the right path there. Um, but yeah, that's all the questions that I see on TikTok. I'm just gonna run through Facebook just to make sure I didn't miss anything here. Uh, Amanda Bear says, ha ha ha, thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll take the thank you as a good thing and that I helped a little bit. If you ever have any other questions, you can definitely message us on TikTok, TikTok or Instagram or give us a call and we can talk about like specifics or anything like that. But yeah, I'm happy I could help. That's good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't see any other questions. Uh, we talked about, we talked all about our housekeeping. We talked about seasonal allergies and pet obesity. Um, so don't forget that I will be uploading these onto YouTube. So if you came in a little bit late or you wanted to rewatch anything, you can jump onto our YouTube channel um, and we'll have all of that set up there um so yeah we are open tomorrow 11 to 6 we are open sundays now 12 to 4 so don't forget to check us out then uh but you can shop anytime online on our website too uh but yeah all right have a great day everyone thanks for joining us for another furry friday